Parashat Bereshit, first Aliyah. When God began to create heaven and earth, the earth being unformed and void with darkness over the surface of the deep and a wind from God sweeping over the water, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and called the darkness night, and there was evening and there was morning, a first day. God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the water that it may separate water from water. God made the expanse and it separated the water, which was below the expanse from the water, which was above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. God said, let the water below the sky be gathered into one area, that the dry land may appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and called the gathering of waters seas, and God saw this was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, seed-bearing plants, fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate day from night. They shall serve as signs for the set times, the days and the years. And they shall serve as lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to dominate the day and the lesser light to dominate the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the earth, to dominate the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that this was good. And there was evening, and there was a morning, a fourth day. God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and birds that fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. God created the great sea monsters and all the living creatures of every kind that creep, which the waters brought forth in swarms, and all the winged birds of every kind. And God saw that this was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and increase. Fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. God said, Let the earth bring forth every kind of living creature, cattle, creeping things, and wild beasts of every kind, and it was so. God made wild beasts of every kind and cattle of every kind and all kinds of creeping things of the earth, and God saw that this was good. And God said, let us make humankind in our image after our likeness. They shall rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the cattle, the whole earth, and all creeping things that creep on earth. And God created humankind in the divine image, creating it in the image of God, creating them male and female. God blessed them and God said to them, be fertile and increase, fill the earth and master it, and rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all living things that creep on earth. God said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant that is upon all the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit, they shall be yours for food. And to all the animals on land, to all the birds of the sky, and to everything that creeps on earth, in which there is the breath of life, I give all the green plants for food. And it was so. And God saw all that had been made and found it very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. The heaven and the earth were finished, and all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that had been undertaken. God ceased on the seventh day from doing any of the work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, having seized on it from all the work of creation 
that God had done. Second, Alia, such is the story of heaven and earth when they were created, when God, Hashem, made earth and the heaven, when no shrub of the field was yet on earth and no grasses of the field had yet sprouted, because God, Hashem, had not sent rain upon the earth and there were no human beings to till the soil, but a flow would well up from the ground and water the whole surface of the earth. God, Hashem, formed the human form from the soil's humus, blowing to its nostrils the breath of life, the human being became a the human became a living being. God Hashem planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the human who had been fashioned. And from the ground God Hashem caused to grow every tree that was pleasing to the sight and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and bad. A river issues forth from Eden to water the garden, and it then divides to become four branches. The first, the name of the first is Pishon, the one that winds through the whole hand of the whole land of Havilah, where the gold is. The gold of the land is good. Delium is there, and lapis lazuli. The name of the second river is Gihon, the one that winds through the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris the one that flows east of Ashur, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. <clears throat> God Hashem settled the human in the Garden of Eden to till it and tend it. And God Hashem commanded the human, saying, Of every tree in the garden you are free to eat. But as for the tree of knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat of it. For as soon as you eat of it, you shall die. God Hashem said, It is not good for the human to be alone, I will make a fitting counterpart for him. And God Hashem formed out of the earth all the wild beasts and all the birds of the sky and brought them to the human to see what he would call them. And whatever the human called each living creature, that would be its name. Third Aliyah. And the human gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the sky and to the wild beasts but no fitting counterpart for a human being was found. So God Hashem cast a deep sleep upon the human, and while he slept, God took one of his sides and closed up the flesh at that side. And God Hashem fashioned the side that had been taken from the human into a woman, bringing her to the human. Then the human said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For from a human was she taken. Hence, when a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife so that they become one flesh, the two of them were naked, the human and his wife, yet they felt no shame. Now the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild beasts that God Hashem had made. It said to the woman, Did God really say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? The woman replied to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the other trees of the garden. It is only one fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat of it or touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You are not going to die. But God knows that as soon as you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like divine beings who know good and bad. And the woman saw that the tree was good for eating and to the light to the eyes and that the tree was desirable as a source of wisdom. He took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they perceived that they were naked. And they sewed together fig leaves and made themselves loincloths. They heard the sound of God Hashem moving about in the garden in the breezy time of day, and the human and his wife hid from God Hashem among the trees of the garden. God Hashem called out to the human and said to him, Where are you? He replied, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the tree from which I had forbidden you to eat? The human said, The woman you put at my side, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And God Hashem said to the woman, What is this you have done? 
And the woman replied, The serpent duped me, and I ate. Then God Hashem said to the serpent, Because you did this, more cursed shall you be than all cattle and all wild beasts. On your belly shall you crawl, the dirt you shall eat. All the days of your life I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. They shall strike at your head, and you shall strike at their heel. And to the woman, God said, I will greatly expand your hard labors, and your pregnancies in hardship shall you bear children. Yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. To Adam, God said, Because you did as your wife said, and ate of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed be the ground because of you. By hard labor shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it sprout for you, but your food shall be the grasses of the field. By the sweat of your brow shall you get bread to eat until you return from the ground, for from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. The human named his wife Eve, because he was the mother of all the living. And God Hashem made garments of skins for Adam and his wife, and clothed them. Fourth Aliyah And God, Hashem said, Now that humankind has become like any of us, knowing good and bad, what if one should stretch out a hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever? So God Hashem banished humankind from the Garden of Eden to till the humus from which it was taken. To till the earth from which it was taken. It was driven out and east of the Garden of Eden were stationed the cherubim and the fiery ever-turning sword to guard the way off to guard the way to the tree of life now the human knew his wife eve and she conceived and bore cain saying i have gained a person with the help of yah she then bore his brother abel abel became a keeper of sheep and cain became a tiller of the soil in the course of time cain brought an offering to hashem from the fruit of the soil and abel for his part brought the choices of the first thing of his flock. Hashem paid heed to Abel and his offering, but to Cain and his offering, God paid no heed. Cain was much distressed and his face fell. And Hashem said to Cain, Why are you distressed? And why is your face fallen? Surely, if you do right, there is uplift. But if you do not do right, sin crouches at the door. It urges to you, towards you, yet you can be its master. Cain said to his brother Abel. And when they were in the field, Cain set up his brother Abel and killed him. Hashem said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? What have you done? Ark your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Therefore, you shall be more cursed than the ground which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer heal its strength to you. You shall become a ceaseless wanderer on earth. Cain said to Hashem, my punishment is too great to bear. Since you have banished me this day from the soil, and I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer on earth, anyone who meets me, may kill me. Hashem said to him, I promise, if anyone kills Cain, sevenfold vengeance shall be exacted, and Hashem put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who meet him should kill him. Cain left the presence of Hashem and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he then founded a city and named the city after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad Mehuhahel, and Mehuhahel begot Metushahel, and Metushahel begot Lamech. Fifth Aliyah. Lamech took to himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zila. Ada bore Jabal. He was the ancestor of those who dwell in tents and admit, amidst herds. And the name of his brother was Jubal. 
He was the ancestor of all who played the lyre and the pipe. As for Zila, she bore to Balkain, who forged all implements of copper and iron, and the sister of Tubalcain was Naama. Sixth Aliyah. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. O wives of Lamech, give ear to my speech. I have slain a person for wounding me, and a lad for bruising me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Set, meaning God has provided me with another offspring in place of Abel, for Cain had killed him. And to Set in turn a son was born, and he named him Enosh. It was then that Hashem began to be invoked by name. This is the record of Adam's line. When God created humankind, it was made in the likeness of God. Male and female were they created, and when they were created, God blessed them and called them humankind. When Adam had lived 130 years, he begot a son in his likeness after his image, and he named him Set. After the birth of Set, Adam lived 800 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Adam came to 950 and 30 years, and he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he begot Enosh. After the birth of Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Seth came to 912 years, and then he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he begot Canaan. After the birth of Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Enosh came to 905 years, and then he died. When Canaan had lived 70 years, he begot Mahalalel. After the birth of Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Canaan came to 910 years, and he died. When Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he begot Yared. <coughs> After the birth of Yared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Mahalalel came to 895 years, and then he died. When Yared had lived 162 years, he begot Enoch. After the birth of Enoch, Yared lived 800 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Yared came to 962 years, then he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he begot Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years, and he begot sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch came to 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and then he was no more, for God took him. Seventh Aliyah. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he begot Lamech. After the birth of Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Methuselah came to 969 years, then he died. When Lamech had lived 182 years, he begot a son, and he named him Noah, saying, This one will provide us relief from our work, from the toil of our hands, out of the very soil which Hashem placed under a curse. After the birth of Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech came to 777 years. Then he died. When Noah had lived 500 years, he, Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. When humankind began to increase on earth, and daughters were born to them, the males among the divine beings saw how pleasing the human women were and took wives from among those who delighted in them. Hashem said, My breath shall not abide in humankind forever, since it too is flesh. Let the days allow them be 120 years. It was then and later too that the Nephilim appeared on earth, when divine beings cohabitated with human women who bore them offspring. Such were the heroes of old, the men of renown. Hashem saw how great was human wickedness on earth, how every plan 
devised by the human mind. There's nothing but evil all the time. And Hashem regretted having made humankind on earth. The sorrowful heart, Hashem said, I will blot out from the earth humankind whom I created, humans together with beasts, creeping things, and the birds of the sky, for I regret that I made them. But Noah found favor with Hashem.